begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. It is Monday. Woo, the start of the week, man. I know everybody hates a Monday. This weekend, it started getting freaking cold again, man. It's supposed to get in the 30s this week at nighttime. Screw that. That's what I gotta say. I am installing a freaking uh, garage heater and uh actually was working on a homemade uh trailer this weekend but lots of stuff going on with hollywood man lots of stuff uh so yes 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 bring it to the table is what i say saturdays at 6 p.m or sundays my fault man scratch that reverse sundays 6 p.m central standard time over on the youtube channel only it will not be available over on Facebook or Spotify and our other platforms. This is just going to be uh, where we sit there, BS. If you want to call in, we'll call. We'll let you do some call-ins because a lot of people have been missing our Motorcycle Madhouse live shows. Uh, but there's been a lot of stuff going on with Insane Throttle. It's hard to keep up, man. We're doing all kinds of work over here, so... I figured I'd set Sundays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time aside to be able to talk with uh, the subscribers, fans of the show, uh, get into all you want to get into. Uh, but when I talk, it's just my opinions. It's not gospel, fellas. So, you know, there might be some questions I might not answer, especially if they're dumb. Uh, I'm just kidding. You know, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. So if you want to get involved in the show, make sure you go over to our YouTube channel on Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. We'll see how that show goes. See how uh, the audience gets involved in all that good stuff. We have a real good chat room on YouTube during the weeks. My guys rock on freaking YouTube, man, and uh, especially when they go over to the Hollywood and China Dolls YouTube channel, they have all kinds of fun, man. Interesting subjects over there as well. Today, a very interesting one. <laughs> very, when I seen this article, I had to freaking do it. Because I went through it point by point, you know, I actually studied the article to see what they were trying to say, what they were trying to push off to the general public. And that has to do with what Sons of Anarchy actually got right. I was like, hmm, now that's a catch title to it. So I figure, okay, let's go through it, and uh, we'll talk about that on Biker News. Oh, oh, wait, 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 if you're in a Super Chat, two bucks, man, that would help the show a lot if you could uh, do a Super Chat. Because YouTube, God forbid, did they throttle us down. You know, I have actually been uh, posting a lot of our videos over on BitChute, because over on BitChute, they don't censor us. You just say whatever the hell you want over on uh, BitChute. So I'm really liking that platform. If you haven't gone there, get on over there and subscribe, man. It's BitChute.com. Just look up Insane Throttle and boom, we're right there. A lot of videos go out the day before the actually sh uh, the actual shows uh premieres or whatever you're you know whatever it is so go on over there we also got a new segment you know because i was looking at the show i was like hmm some new stuff we need to do other than just cover all the bad that goes on the scene well i happen to be a gearhead so we're going to be talking flat tracker news uh hopefully it gets some of you people out there that have never been into the sport into the sport as well as motocross, uh, NHRA too, baby. Not only the bikes, man, but the freaking cars. I love them cars, man. Can you imagine going 
are going through more G's than astronauts do in a couple seconds, man. That just has to be the best thing out there. So I'm going to add that segment in too. If there's segments that you'd like us to cover other than, you know, the bad going on in the scene, like I said, uh, you know, I'm going to try to put as much good as I can. That way we can, you know, even everything out, if you will. Because to have a balanced program, I believe you have to give everything, both sides. I've always said that. Uh, but a lot of stories focus on the bad, so I want to kind of counter that to make it look good. <laughs> One of the questions uh, that I was asked before I go into the news, and I don't even know if I should save this for Sunday's chat, but, uh, you know, maybe you guys ask it again, and I'll tell you again what I think, is uh, Leo's in motorcycle clubs, you know, <laughs> it's a subject for me, man. I don't come from the angle of clubs or what a biker would, I guess. I come from it from a different angle with the experiences I've had with cops. So, yeah, there's a bias there. Do I believe all cops are bad? No, I don't. You know, there's a lot of them in Chicago, though. Uh, but anyway... No, I don't believe they're all bad. What I believe is when somebody takes an oath, they should keep to that oath. If they don't keep to it, then there's a big freaking problem, man. That's when you get people that actually don't like you. You know, if I've seen some stuff, too, from cops, man. Uh, but as far as Leo Motorcycle Clubs... I don't, you know, I think they're out there playing bike, you know, clubber, you know, but I guess if they're not freaking, you know, out there hurting anybody, that's on them. <laughs> you gotta, you guys gotta remember when it comes to clubs, one of the biggest things you'll get from me is I really don't care because that's not the whole scene. And that might piss a lot of people off hearing that. But it's the truth. You know, why should I, you know, I do the biker news. Why should I spend any more time covering that stuff when there's so much more stuff to cover? And yeah, I cover it all the time, but I'm just saying. You need some kind of new talk in there, man. Everybody's about MC this, MC that. And it's like, you know, I actually did that video, What's the Fascination? And Black Dragon actually, because I asked him on his show. And he actually said, and I really liked what his answer was. I guess it's the reputation. I guess it's that bad boy image. That's why a lot of people want clubs and they just want to be a part of something. Which is cool. Which is cool. But to make that everything that you want to hear about or want to see or be, you know, I kind of think that's just narrow-minded, man. I think there's just so much more to this biker scene than just that. And a lot of people do their self a disservice when that's all they're focusing on. You should be focused on riding to the next party, the rally, getting involved with community s stuff. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Hill climbs, flat tracks, the fun stuff. Well, the fun stuff to me, anyway, is that's my opinion. You know, I know a lot of people are going to be like, nah, 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 nah. And we do have a lot of MCs uh, that listen to us, which is cool. But it's just... Lately, it's got to be, and you know what, I say it over and over again, and you'll see some of the comments posted on our platforms where they're asking about clubs. I just send them over to Black Dragon, I just say, we'll go see Black Dragon now. Because that's not where my creativity is, that's not where my show's gonna be it's not a protocol channel I'm not talking about the politics I'm talking about the news when it comes to MCs 
So, I guess that's my monologue for today, but this is a very, very funny article that's about to come up, and I know you guys are going to like it too. You're going to be shaking your heads like, what the hell's going on here? So, let's get going. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene go over now and bookmark harleyliberty.com Rock on. here we go looper.com yes it's looper.com i just uh was thinking you are a loop <laughs> for writing something like this you know but it's something that i wanted to cover because i guess sons of anarchy had a huge freaking influence on a lot of what we're seeing today so let's debate it Let's debate old loopers freaking uh, whatever they're trying to say here. Because that's what I got out of the uh, articles. Like, what are you trying to push on us? Anyway, Sons of Anarchy blasted biker culture to the forefront of viewers' minds for seven seasons. That it did indeed. One of the things that I guess is cool about it, just like Biker Build-Off or some of the earlier shows in the 2000s was... It brought newer people to the motorcycling community. And I love when I see the motorcycle community growing, man. That's the best. <clears throat> Excuse me. The show was dramatic and remembered at people, especially you new jacks that are watching my show or listening to it. It's a show. It's not supposed to be taken literally, okay? The characters were cool and the bikes were loud. The sex, drugs, and violence were everything you would ask for in a TV show about an outlaw motorcycle club. Well, at least they got that right. It, an outlaw motorcycle club and they didn't call it an outlaw motorcycle gang. The show was even popular enough to earn itself a spinoff, Mayans MC. I don't really like it. I, 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 I don't. <laughs> Uh, then it goes on to say it was also fairly influential off-screen. Thanks to Sons of Anarchy's popularity, people who have never touched two wheels to pavement were wearing leather from head to toe and wrecking Harleys everywhere. A schmuck to say something like that. How rude. Only thing you got right there was it got people into the freaking scene. While motorcycle clubs popped up as a million wannabes decided they would be the next Jack's Teller. Hey, you got that right. Uh, the Sons of Anarchy Red Rood Originals, or Sam Crow, passed their uh, stuff on through memorabilia that you can still see on fledgling bikers six years after the facts. Hmm. Sons of Anarchy got some things right. It, uh, you know, it's arguing. Uh, Sons of Anarchy was more accurate than most people would think. <laughs> you gotta hear this one. The members of Sam Crow loved motorcycles and rode them wherever possible and whenever possible. The members were bonded. This is true. They had a clubhouse and club meetings where the patch holders would vote on important club business. This is true. One aspect that the show absolutely nailed was the structure within the MC. You're using Cyclefish as a reference. The event page, right? Oh my god. Biker clubs have uh, structures that just like that in the show with positions like P, VP, Treasurer, Sergeant at Arms, Prospect. True enough. The Sons of Anarchy were technically an outlaw MC and would be considered as such outside of the show. Now, being an outlaw has nothing to do with breaking laws and committing crimes. Damn, I'm really liking you, man. You know, some of the stuff you were stupid with, but... Damn! This is the first article I've ever seen that said that. All it takes for an MC to be considered an outlaw club is to make your own bylaws instead of following the rules... Of the American Motorcycle Association. Outlaws are the 1% of riders who do not submit. You're wrong there. You know, you were doing so damn good. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the AMA. 
Uh, pretty well on point. Outlaw bikers tend to wear denim and leather. Personally, I really don't wear leather. I love denim, but, uh, you know, I got denim vest and stuff. I won't wear leather. It's too damn hot. They love Harleys, and, well, they like other bikes as well. And they'll party like there's no tomorrow. Well, some of us do. Not mostly uh, the politically correct. And most of their clubs tend to be white. You notice that most outlaw biker gangs are white. Oh, you screwed up. There you were. You're doing good with the motorcycle club stuff, and you said biker gangs. And maybe Hispanic, but they rarely ever admit black bikers into the ranks. That's because there's different scenes within the lifestyle. You just bunched everybody to freaking gather, man. Sam Crow had bylaws against this. It's a sad truth, but racism... There it is. Gotta use the racism word. Still has a lot of pull in the MC culture. The show got that right, too. <laughs> uh, some aspects of the show are purely for entertainment. I would have to argue that, hmm, all of it is. As one alleged one percenter points out, he finds the show to be utter nonsense when it comes to accurately portraying MC and outlaw biker culture. I agree. For one, as he explains, Gemma Teller uh, Morrow has way too much influence in the club. According to motorcycle philosophy, most MCs view women as property of their members, so a character like Gemma wouldn't have much of a say in club business at all. Very, very true. Very, very true. It kind of still screws me up when I see freaking some guys that are, you know, in an outlaw club, uh, one percenter club, whatever you want to call them, and their wife's yelling at them. That just screws me up. Meanwhile, the crime portrayed is just unrealistic. This is true. You know... Certain people from clubs, you know, the outsiders, you know, that don't make up the whole damn club, uh, commit a little crime. Uh, some have been charged under RICO. But no organized crime syndicate in the world would be able to get away with 153 murders. This is true. Unless you're south of the border with the cartels, then this is a daily thing. But no motorcycle club I know would get away with 153 murders. With, that, uh, with numbers that large, no federal agency is going to give them a chance to turn things legit. And this is very true. Very true. Uh, motorcycle clubs are like brotherhoods. Yeah, everyone has to trust each other. Mm, yeah. There's no way an MC in the real world would continue to follow Jax Teller with all the manipulating and backstabbing the guy did over the years, nor would they trust him after he was working with a cop to go legit. Actually, that was a club vote. You know, I don't know if you've seen that season at the end when he was in the transport. They actually voted with him. But it's not like they were going to get rid of the main character and main hunk of the show for some thing as petty as realism <laughs> anyway that's by nicholas out of looper.com how accurate was sons of anarchy you guys tell me anyway let's go to yahoo and why this is under sports i have no clue judge apologizes to woman 83 hauled into court for causing a crash death of a biker who was doing 100 miles an hour. Holy cow. 83-year-old woman charged with killing a biker who was said to be doing over 100, uh, 100 I was going to say 100,000, but 100 uh, miles an hour. At the time of a fatal crash, has received an apology from a judge. Mavis Witz was cleared of any wrongdoing after she was accused of being responsible for the death of Stephen uh, Ferguson, 51. The elderly motorist was charged with causing death by careless driving after she struck Mr. Ferguson with her Renault Kingo in Rugbury, uh, Warkershire. However, a court heard the motorcyclist was traveling at over 100 miles an hour along a 50-mile 
per hour road at the time of the smash and Wits could do nothing to avoid the uh, collision. Speed kills, man. Acting stupid on a bike kills. And after having legal proceedings lingering over her for the past 18 months, the pensioner was finally exonerated of any blame this week. Judge Silvio D. Bertanu apologized for the distress caused by her case after the prosecution offered no further evidence. How the hell are you going to arrest an 83-year-old woman? A guy was doing 100 miles an hour on a 50 mile an hour road. There's no way she has the freaking reaction time. She told the defendant there was no suggestion she had done anything wrong and it could have happened to anyone. The judge said you may not get an apology from anyone else so you are going to get one from me. I like this judge. It would be distressing to be involved in such a collision and then to get suggestions it was your fault when it is perfectly clear that it is not must be even more distressing. So that is awesome for her, man. I hate that a biker got killed, but you caused the accident going 100 miles an hour. And the lady, especially an 83-year-old lady, don't have any reaction time to this. Now, over on Australia, man, and we covered this a lot in the last couple weeks, but Shane Bowden was found dead on the Gold Coast. He was the one who made headlines for lying on his border declaration pass. He was executed. Police have launched a manhunt after the execution of a former bikey on the Gold Coast. Shane Bowden, 47, was shot multiple times in his car in the driveway of his uh, home earlier on Monday morning. Queensland police said a burnt out car was found nearby a short time later. Two crime scenes have been set up, one at the unit complex on Cox Street, the other where the car was found. Speaking to the media, Detective Superintendent Brendan Smith said police were hunting at least two men. Quote, we believe the victim came home from the gym. He's driving into his driveway and the assailants have run in and shot him multiple times. It clearly seems he had been ambushed. There's a picture of him in his Mongols uh, stuff. Uh, he was also charged over that 2006 ballroom blitz. It's understood Bowden's partner and two small children were at home at the time of the incident, but did not witness the horrific shooting. Police say they are searching for at least two men, one dressed in dark clothing, the other in light. Uh, there, it seems like there's no risk in the community, as it appeared it was an internal Mongols incident after Bowden was reportedly kicked out of the gang earlier this year. Well, it's important that people understand that these gangs are criminals. They don't take fluffy toys to hospital. They are criminal gangs who survive on retribution, violence, and threats. And if anyone thinks anything otherwise, they're an idiot. Ouch, what a dick. Quote, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Ouch. Anyway, yeah, that is... uh. Shane Bowden, man, he was found dead, executed. And if you look at previous episodes, you just see us talking about it. Now, let's go to some flat track, baby. My favorite part of the show, flat track. Uh, some of the news, uh, October 9th, I know that... Uh, whew, this is a good one. Carver beats uh, the big boys in Charlotte. And I think Charlotte uh, did cancel some of its stuff. They're heading to Daytona for rain because it was rain. Uh, Jeffrey Carver Jr., number 23, from the Happy Trails Racing FTR 750, was in full spoiler mode at the dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Claiming his fourth career Progressive American Flat Track Premier Class victory in Friday night's Progressive Charlotte Half Mile. Hell yeah. Uh, the opening half of the AEFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines main event took shape as in the expected matching uh, the Grand National Championship title rivals Jeremy Mees. I love Jeremy Mees, baby. 
He rides the uh, Indian uh, motorcycle private insurance FTR 750. See, they do the same things that NASCAR do, man. You notice that Brian Broman uh, was the number one Indian motorcycle, too. Indians killing it in flat track, man. I don't know what the hell happened to Harley and the other man manufacturers, but damn, Indian. Goes on to say, Mies controlled from the front with uh, reigning champion and current points leader Bauman not far behind as the two left the uh, rest of the field in their wake. However, a red flag that was shown following a Davis Fisher crash changed the complexion of the race entirely. The restart brought Bauman back close enough to pounce on Mies and the two proceeded to trade the lead back and forth repeatedly. With an extended series of block passes and squared up maneuvers, the factory Indian infighting opened the door for a charging carver. You know what? I actually like this article, man. He, it's like he's writing it where he's giving you the play-by-play -play and you're right there. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, while he, you know, it goes, I'm just skipping a couple paragraphs here. Me still made up some good ground on Bauman in the championship fight. Rock on, man. Brandon Robinson. AmericanFlatTrack.com is where I'm getting this news from. Get on over there if you're into some sickles, baby, man. Flat tracking, hill climbs. They got all kinds of events, man. All kinds of events. Now, my favorite Midwest Nationals Pro Stock, Pro Stock Motorcycle Racing will finish at Nall Nat, or Fall Nats. And, uh, let's see here. They were hampered by, uh, you know, weather, of course. It will be uh, comp the Mopar Express Lane NHRA uh, Midwest Nationals will be completed during qualifying at the AAA Texas N or NHRA Fall Nationals. Let's see what we got here. Pro Stock and uh, Pro Stock Motorcycle Competition. You got any racers out there? Motorcycles, man? Dragsters? Let me know. If you have uh, ever done any, let me know. From the weather hampered uh, Mopar Express NHRA Midwest Nationals will be uh, completed. We covered that. Action was halted midway through the second round of Pro Stock Car with Greg Anderson and Matt Harvard both advancing. The remaining two pairs in the second uh, round of Pro Stock, Eric Enders versus Chris Magada and Aaron Stanville versus Jason Lane will be contested at the end of the first qualifying session Saturday. Lane choice will carry over from the Midwest Nationals. But will run order will be determined in uh, Daly. See here, the semifinals of the Pro Stock Motorcycle from the Midwest Nationals will run as the final two pairs on Saturday. Rocky Row, man, there is your news, man. Uh, <laughs> of course, NHRA.com, man. I love NHRA. You know, I used to love freaking NASCAR, but when they got woke... They're going broke in my eyes, man. You got rid of that flag, screw you. So, won't support you, but NHRA has always been my favorite, man. So, let's go to the final thoughts. Chinadal from Hollywood and Chinadal Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And how you guys doing? Welcome back. Got a great announcement. The winner of one of the contests we were doing was Jonathan Marino. Thanks for all the shares, man. You get a signed copy of New Age and Biking and Brotherhood. Really appreciate it. That was from Long Rider, a subscriber. He uh, sponsored that contest. Got much more going on, baby. Much more. So, the Sons of Anarchy thing. You know, the only thing I can say, guys, is it's a show. When people start understanding that, the better they're going to be. Don't live by your life by a TV program, man. Especially one that's only for entertainment and you can see right through it. You know, I, I really like that one response from the one percenter who said, you know what, all those over 100 people got killed. You don't think they're going to get busted up or found out? Yeah. <laughs> and then about Jumma Tyler. <laughs> 
most women I know around these clubs don't have a big say in it. So take it what it is. See if you go over it. See if, you know, you know they got some things right, some things wrong. Mostly wrong, if you ask me. But my that's my opinion. You know, let me know what you guys think. What about the new motorcycle sports segment, man? I know we're not going to be able to do it much because winter's coming and all that stuff. But I really wanted to change around the program a little bit. So let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, also, man, that Shane Bowden story. Holy cow, man. We were just talking about this guy, and boy, they just took him out. Whew. The bad stuff that goes on in the scene, I know, I know, but I'm trying to freaking balance it. But anyway, don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China Dow's uh, show. We do that one Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, just like we do over on this channel on YouTube. Get in that chat room, man. You're not, it's a pretty funny freaking show. If you ask anybody who's been watching it, yeah, it's a funny show. I think you'll like it. But anyway, that is the show for today. I'm keeping them around about a half hour now. I think that's enough time to really get your news, get some opinions and stuff, and it don't, uh, you know, you got to get back to work, guys. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen over on Spotify and all that, guys. I'll talk to you later.